Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today's fountain pen back from the dead is this circa 1937 Schaefer Balance in marine green celluloid. Sometimes it's astonishing how quickly an 86 year old fountain pen can come back to life and look, feel and write like it's brand new. I doubt there are many things manufactured today that could be dusted off and refurbished to be as beautiful and brand new as this 1937 Schaefer Balance, which was made in Malton, now Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It may not look like much today, but the design of the Schaefer Balance fountain pen model, when it was debuted by Schaefer in 1929, was as groundbreaking as the hooded nib design of the 1939 Parker 51. Let me share a little history of this very famous pen design and show you how I brought it back to life right now. So let's take a look at what this Schaefer Balance looked like when I bought it at an antique store. So I have a number of candidates for Pen Resurrection Sunday videos, pens to restore. I'm currently working on a couple of Vacumatic Parker 51s they're both from around 1947-48. This one's a Demi. And I've worked on the barrels already. I've got them shining up like brand new. One of these was so scarred, it still has a crack mark in it. This one was so scarred that it's unbelievable how it came up at all. But uh, I'm still waiting on sacks for, for these pens to restore. And they're coming via the long boat from the UK and through the on-strike Royal Mail service. So while we're waiting, I had picked up these two Schaefer balances. And these are the slim, small, slim Schaefer balances. They're both beautiful. This red carmine kind of look celluloid and this green, classic green celluloid. I only have one sack that works for both pens. So I have to decide which one I'm going to restore. Uh, this one has the non-traditional Schaefer balance clip. And it's kind of like stainless steel. They both have engraving on them. This one's Schaefer Pen Company of Canada Limited, Toronto, Ontario. Patent 1936. And this one has a 5-30 Schaefer's nib which looks to be in fairly good shape and this has not been cleaned or anything the section has a transparent ink window in it and the section comes off and there's a dead sack in there that needs to be retrieved so that's a possibility it has a good nib but uh, non-standard hardware and this green one is in beautiful shape that beautiful flat knob Schaefer without any Schaefer on the clip itself. But they did weird things apparently in Canada. W.A. Schaefer Pen Company of Canada Limited Malton, Ontario, made in Canada. And this one has the same kind of section, but this one has a 33 Schaefer's 14 karat gold nib made in Canada. And that nib is in rougher shape. It's going to need some some work on it so decisions decisions which one of you guys gets the new sack which one of you is tired of being dead i can't want to change your mind which one of you is tired of this life you i like the red on this one but i like the standard clip on this one a little bit better 
So I think this is the one we're going to put this sack in. And that section comes out as well. I didn't have to do anything to get the sack out. I just had to twist it a little bit. And that petrified sack is still attached there. And there's some sack on the inside that needs to be cleaned out. So I'm going to go through the process of cleaning and restoring this pen. I think the first thing to do is to get that sack out of there and those remnants of sack off the section. See if we can get soak this section and nib and get that nib and feed out of there and get those polished up and cleaned and tuned. Then maybe polish up the hardware and polish up that celluloid. Make sure that that lever mechanism works correctly. And we'll go through those steps to restore this pen for a Pen Resurrection Sunday. And this is what it looks like now. The celluloid came up gleaming and the gold is spectacular. Schaefer is responsible for two of history's greatest fountain pen innovations, the celluloid pen and the streamlined torpedo cigar-shaped pen. Schaefer introduced celluloid plastic to the world of black hard rubber pens back in 1924. But in 1929, they took that celluloid plastic with all of its myriad colors and patterns and made a streamlined fountain pen with the balance. Streamlining was just in vogue in 1929 after decades of chunky, heavy, black hard rubber pens. And this lightweight, colorful, and incredibly well-balanced pen took off like a rocket into the stratosphere. The aptly named balance was very popular and the shape is mimicked by many pen makers throughout history, right up to today's modern pens. Pens like this, familiar shaped pen, owe their origins to Schaefer and the Schaefer balance. Schaefer continued to make the balance until 1942 when it was replaced by the Triumph models and the lever filler was phased out with Schaefer's innovation of the touchdown filler after the war. The balance came in a number of sizes, petite, short slender, short standard, full length slender, full length standard, and oversize. The petite was four and one eighth inches long and the oversize was five and five eighths inches long. And this marine green celluloid is an example of a short slender balance. Let's take a short look at this pen now that it's been restored. You see the gold came up very, very nice. And that celluloid is now just gleaming. And the nib and section came up beautifully. And there's that 14 karat gold nib. It says Schaefer's 33 made in Canada 14k and there's the ebonite feed and now I'll take you through the restoration process so first off let's try to get this sack off of this section and out of the barrel so I'm going to use my exacto blade to try to scrape off most of the remnants of that old petrified sack this part is still fairly pliable which is amazing after so many years Just gently scrape the remains off of that nozzle. And this is not going to be easy to knock out because it has one of those angled ends of the feed. I'll let that soak in some uh, pen flush and get all the old ink out of it. And let's see what we can do with the barrel. There, most of it came out fairly easily. And I can use my brushes to get the remainder of that out of there. Well, it looks like I got all of it out pretty much. That bar is in good shape and all of that sack is gone. Now we're gonna put the nib and section and feed into my ultrasonic bath of pen flush, which is uh, nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia. So we'll drop it in there. And let that run. And see whether that loosens things up a bit. And while that ultrasonic is working on the section feed and nib, let's see if we can brighten up some of this hardware here. This is all gold plated, so you have to be careful and you don't go through the plate and lose any of the gold on it but we'll see what we can do with my jeweler's polishing cloth 
that just after a couple of rubbings there look at that came right up the good thing about some of these vintage shafers is that they were plated very nicely so there's substantial gold plating on there Let's see what we can do with the band check often make sure I'm not going through there. looking pretty good we just have to polish up the celluloid let's get that lever bar polished up not bad and pretty good on all sides I think it'll take a little bit of polishing compound now to that celluloid so I just put some low tack painters masking tape over the gold parts of the pen and then I'm going to use some Meguiar's swirl remover too soft cloth and we're gonna polish this celluloid up a bit get out my microfiber cloth and, and polish it up now I think that pen is ready for its nib and section so I've decided to abandon the attempt to try to get that nib and feed out of there I'm going to polish it up as best that I can. I polished up the nib a little bit, shining up really nicely. So I straightened that nib out a little bit as well. It had a little bit of a bend in the tip. So I just gently worked on it. It's very soft material, so it's easy to work. I don't want to break that feed by trying to get it out. And it's really clean. It wasn't a lot of residual ink in there. And so it's come up very nicely. So I'm just going to polish that section up uh, with some polishing compound and then we'll resack it easier to hold on to it if it's in the pen a lot of dirt on that section we'll see how nicely that's coming up and it's important to thoroughly soak all of this stuff so none of that polishing compound gets into the feed to inhibit the flow of the ink. So I got my resacking tools out. I'm going to try to determine the length of this sack. So I'm going to put it in until it stops. Pinch it right there. Actually, I can just cut it right there. So that now goes all the way down just to the top. Of that barrel and then I line up where the section ends up and it's about two threads up measure from there down to two threads up so it's right about there and pinch it right there and trim off that bit my sack spreader on I'll do a test fit and see whether that goes in there that looks pretty good we get out our lifetime supply of shellac and then just paint that part of the section Schaefer has already roughened up that part and this part here with some texture to make it grip a little bit better which is a good idea and we spread our sack with our handy dandy Acme sack spreader tool is a little bit more difficult because you got to get up over the end of that feed tail there we go I'm just going to give it a little bit of a twist just like that and just paint the outside with a little bit more shellac especially where there's a groove there so we don't get any leakage we're going to get out our talc dredge that sack in talc 
And then we're going to. All right, help me in with this. Help me in with this. Help me in Just with this. Think of your secretary. Ah, yeah, that was a very good suggestion. Slide this hack in. Now, I'm not going to shellac that right away in case I have any issues. Once I've decided that this pen is okay, I'll probably put a little bit of shellac on there just to keep that section from rotating. And in it goes. And there we are. Then we'll try it with some ink. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1937 Schaefer Balance Marine Green with a 1947 Parker 51 Demi, a 1940s Esterbrook J, a 1940s Waterman Starlet, a 1931 Parker Duofold Jr., and a 1940s Eversharp Skyline. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. As you can see, standard size pens from the 1940s were on the small side. Here's a Pilot Metropolitan placed in the middle of them, posted for scale. And this Esterbrook J still has the tag on it because this pen doesn't belong to me. This is Janice's pen. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. These pens were designed to be used posted as most of them are too small in the hand unposted. And let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. So after cleaning and polishing the pen and replacing the sack, I inked it with Waterman's Serenity Blue. Now let's see how it writes. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is a 1937 Circa Schaefer Balance, and it has a 14 karat gold fine number 33 nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet for a fine nib and the ink as I said is Waterman Serenity Blue which is known to be very pH neutral and safe to use with vintage pens. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.3 millimeters which makes it a western extra extra fine but it does have some bounce to it so you're going to get some line variation out of it if you push it a little bit it's not what i would call a flex nib but it does have some some bounce So it has some, what I would call some vintage bounce to it. It really has that vintage vibe. And there's a good deal of feedback. I worked on this nib quite a bit uh, to straighten and align the tines. And let's do a quote. And for some reverse writing. Well, it almost writes the same in reverse. A little bit finer, a little bit drier. And for some quick writing. Yeah, that feed does not have any difficulty keeping up. So what are my thoughts on this pen resurrection? Well, I was surprised how quickly and easily this pen was resurrected. The nib was the thing that I took the most care with, and I don't think I'm done with it yet. I think I'll continue tweaking it until I get the flow a little better and get the nib to a level of smoothness that is more comfortable. The feedback is bordering on scratchiness at this point, so I want to get it back to where it's a little bit smoother. But all in all, a very satisfying pen resurrection. And I did the entire resurrection from the very first shot of it without it being polished and without it being fixed until the first shots of it here in about one afternoon. So I'm very pleased with this pen resurrection. I hope you enjoyed this pen resurrection as much as I did. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. 
And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. For watching and that's all she wrote I made this